good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be out there on the globe today, listening to this wonderful screencast from WordPress plugins from A to Z with your host, John Overall. This evening here, I'm going to be covering the shopping cart from Tribulant Sh Software. It's a very nice shopping cart, very robust shopping cart, and it does take a while to get it all set up and functioning correctly. So first off, we're going to go through the usual rigmarole about how to uh, get it all installed and set up and functioning. So first off, of course, you start with your website, whatever it's going to be. Then you go into Add New Plugins and if you've gone and purchased the plugin you'll have it on your local computer you'll do a you'll do an upload for the plugin you'll do a browse find the plugin and then add it uploaded i've already done that here so once it's uploaded you'll find it in your plugins menu and in your plugins menu for it it'll be right here it's called checkout and what we're going to do here first is then what you do is you click activate and it activates the plugin. Now the nice thing about this plugin is it creates a whole bunch of new uh, pages for you to work with the plugin. And of course if you've got your pages all set up you'll have your menus already set up and functioning so you'll have to add that. We'll show you what to do. Now the first thing it does is it comes up and says get a serial key. Now if you've purchased the plugin you have to go get the serial key. And you'll go into your Tribulant software area and you'll request a new serial key. And to request a serial key you have to get your host domain name. And the host domain name for this one here is going to be sandboxpage.2.com which of course is my test zone and we'll put that in there and you don't use the HTTP on it and you request a serial key and it'll kick up a serial key for you and it kicks it up right here for you and then you just copy it for pasting go back in click submit the serial key dump it in there submit it should authenticate it takes a moment apply it closed checkout is activated once it's activated gives you a whole new menu block down at the bottom of your window right here for everything you need now before we go any further what we do have to do is we do have to double check the pages now we'll check and make sure the front here has been set up just in case they don't they don't automatically come into your menu anymore if you've got menu if you're using the menuing system so what you have to do of course is you have to go into under the appearance menu click on menus go find the new pages that were created which is your account shopping cart shop all three of those were the pages that were just created now you gotta add those to your menu and what you need to do is you need to put them underneath each other and block them in place and then click save menu and once that's saved let's verify we've got the menu pages go to your front page of your website and hit refresh and there they are and you can click on your account verify it's there shopping cart verify it's there and shop verify it's there okay all that's working so now what you also have to do is you now also have to add a couple of widgets so we're going to go in and we're going to add a couple of widgets to this and we're going to put the widgets over in the secondary widget area because there's nothing there at the moment just to make it simple and you'll find it under the checkout widget and you can put as many of these widgets in here as you need because once you put the widget in there it allows you to choose what you want it to be because you drop down menu shopping cart product search shop categories latest products product suppliers remote products price ranges keywords drop down we're gonna start with shopping cart and we're gonna label it label it shopping cart okay and we want it to show all details hide the widget when the shopping cart is empty enable coupon form yes 
and link below widget no click save and collapse that one now let's go get a second widget and we're going to have this one be latest products and then label it show up uh, upwards of five products show thumbnails mm, we'll try it and see what happens link below widget no show is drop down no you know we'll experiment with those as we go along but we just need something there for the start now what we do is go back to the front page and verify that those two widgets are there okay and there they are there's just nothing in them yet because there's nothing in our store so now that we've got that first thing we need to do is go check out what is in this menu here you've got overview configuration import products shop categories products product content digital files product images suppliers product variations variation options custom fields and blah 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 the list goes on so what we're going to do first off is we're going to knock off the obvious ones support and help this one here this is where you can go get support from their website open it up you can go check out their website and get support on how to set it up some tips tricks and other things it needs then you get news from their blog or submit a support ticket because you've paid for this software you get 90 days of support with it after 90 days you have to renew your license for support you don't have to renew your license for the software but just for the support so now what we're going to do back down to the menu is we're going to start with the overview and in the overview this just tells us what we have in here right now we have nothing we have no discounts no income no products nothing okay so that's this is where you come and you check it out when you first get in here now this is a new version so they've added something here subscribe to the tribulate.com RSS news feed so this is where you can subscribe to the RSS from Tribulant to make sure you get the latest updates that you need okay so first off we have to configure it and your configuration is of course one of the most important things you will do do here okay so we're waiting for the configuration to load take just a moment and here it comes come on there we go okay so now it tells you first off you have to set your invoice settings you configure it under configuration settings we'll get back to that WordPress related change permissions what this is for is this is for if you want to give different permissions to different sections and allow different levels of users to be able to change them the default setting is everything you must be an administrator to do except for shopping and it's like say for instance you have people who can check out your orders to, to fulfill the orders they can go in here and they're your editors whatever level they are you can change it to that level you can have them change and add files so there's multiple things you can do here we're just gonna leave that as no because we're not gonna house with it now you need to add a email here and the email we're going to add here is our demo email which is uh, I believe it's web no that's not it um, F forget it I gotta edit that up okay so we're gonna add this email here and add your email address in there okay the shop URL should be the same URL as your site your target markets unless you're targeting the whole world you go select whatever countries you are targeting yourself to because I'm doing this in Canada well my target market is Canada and just because we're going to add the United States to it there it is 
because the U.S. is a fairly decent target market for us here in Canada. Currency, we want Canadian dollars, especially now since the Canadian dollar is worth more than the U.S. dollar. Currency symbol before, decimal separator, yes, showcase the website. This is for if you want to have a website that just showcases products and has no prices or sales involved. Simple thing. Tiny MCE button, you want that because it adds a little button to your setup. Enable gzip co compression. This is that compresses the content on your WordPress website using the gzip handler. We're going to go with no for that. Shop front page, we're going to use the shop page. Okay, and you can see it's given us the three pages here that's created. Shopping cart and your account, those are already done. The categories parent, we forgot to create a category for this. So we're going to have to come back to that in just a moment. In fact, what I'm going to do here is we're going to go down. I've just got to go back up here. We're going to save that for a moment. And now we're going to pop over real quick and create a category. And we need a specific category for the shop. You don't have to do this, but for simplicity's sake and demonstration's sake, I want to have that here for everyone to look at. Come on. Give me the categories. So we're going to call it store shopping just because. And if you have not created categories, it's a simple matter of Add the category, it automatically creates the slug for you. All good. So back to the configuration. Wait for the configuration to load for us. Come on. having a rough time here tonight for some reason. Okay, so back to where we were. Okay, so the category's parent is, where'd it go? Store shopping, okay? Create WordPress posts or pages. This is an important choice when you first set up your store. If you're going to have multiple products or numerous products in here, you really want to uh, leave this turned on. Okay, so it creates posts or pages. And you're going to also want to determine whether you're going to create your products as posts or as pages. This determines numerous things with the way the store works. Of course, the store uses the custom post types to do all this stuff. So what you're going to do is you're going to leave that turned on, update the content. You want it to update the actual content as well as the title and parent and everything. But this is the one that's important, default post type. Okay, now it's either going to be a post or a page. Now, if you got more than 50 products, it's recommending you use post, not page, because pages, of course, as we know, are dealt with in a different way in WordPress than posts are. Posts are easier to manage. You can categorize posts. You can adjust them. You can't do that with pages. You have to put pages in, in categories and parents and assign templates and other things to the uh, pages, to the products. So we're going to create them as posts. No templates, nothing else. The keywords here, what these keywords are for, is they're the default values shown when you're adding content to your posts, when you're adding products. This is where they're the keywords for it, the supplier names, the category. Also how people look for things on the front. This is the caption tests and messages, text and messages for it. <clears throat> so all the default settings are quite good user related settings content access to logged in users only so you can make your store so that they must become a member and log in to your website or you can leave it so anyone can shop it's usually best to let anyone shop and then make them create an account when they buy username preference you can allow them to choose their username if you don't allow them to do it it'll use the customer's email address as the WordPress username. Not a bad idea. 
let it do that. Password preference, yeah, let them choose. User, new user notification, yes. This is so the customer gets a notification with their username and password. The duration of the cookie on the site, seven days. You capture the setting or shipping details if you're shipping products, very important. And your default country setup. Uh, this one here is Canada. Shopping cart. Add to Ajax, have it as an Ajax, continue shopping link, yes. Enable the Buy Now feature, not recommending, because if you use the Buy Now feature, it, once they click Buy Now, it takes them directly to the shopping cart, and then they have to do a triple back to get back to the store. Leave it turned off. Product page settings, show the categories, show the keywords, all of the default settings down through here is quite good. Now you can change or modify, like if you don't want it to say add to basket, you can have it say add to cart or, or get your product now or buy now or something else. Um, the zero price text is configured for price, um, related products and tab, yes. What this does, this will create an additional tab, and we'll be showing you how that works later so that if there's a related products to what they're buying, it shows up. Related products in the list view or a grid view. I kind of like the grid view. It looks better. Show fields in tab. This is so you can display custom fields in a tab. And what that's for is custom fields to allow additional items to come in there. You can see your additional choices here. And you'll see underneath it allows you for thumbnail images, um, a universal text box. This is so you can place a message below it. Okay, and then you've got thumbnail dis dimensions, which disappears if you put the universal text box. Thumbnail quality, no image URL. This is if you do not have an image available. For okay, and we'll leave that. The product loop. Okay, and if, and if you know much about the WordPress uh, code, you'll know what the loop is. I'm not going to try to explain it. This is how it will set it up. It'll either be a list or a grid view. I like grid view, again. Sorting options show. Uh, default order by date. You can also have it order it by title or price, depending on what you like as default. They'll be able to change it. Have it descending or, e or ascending. In other words, top to bottom or bottom to top. Product title above image. Truncate titles. You can truncate the titles down by entering a character number here. Maybe good, maybe not good. Your choice. You know, give it some thought. Now you can link the thumbnail to the product page. Very good idea. So if they click the picture, they go to the product. Show search results. Category settings. Show the category title. All the default settings down through here are quite good. You can play with it once you've got your store fully functioning. See what works best for you. Supplier settings. This is to create WordPress posts or pages. Yes. Hide the suppliers from the customers. Yes. This is because this what this is for is if you have multiple suppliers supplying you with the same sort of thing. Like you buy t-shirts. Say you buy the gray ones from Joe's t-shirt and you buy the white ones from Al's t-shirt. This is so you know where your suppliers are and when you need to reorder where you get it from. You can also have your suppliers log in and put their own products on the website too. That's another interesting useful feature. Category add or delete. So you can add categories, remove or delete them in the system. Allow the suppliers to do that themselves. Probably a, not a good idea. Um, extra product images. Yes. Number of thumbs on product, up to three. Discount coupons, enable that. Allow multiple coupons per order, not a good idea. Because then they could multiple coupon it down to zero. Favorite products, yes. Where to show it, on the product pages. Always a good idea. Now, the next items down here is the payment system. If you use authorized net, you set that up here. If you use eWay, you set that up here. If you use PayPal standard, this is where you set that up. We're going to leave that just the way it is right now. And there's a whole bunch of payment systems pre-configured in here. Okay, and you get down through the payment systems, virtual, and then you got to configure your email, either SMTP or PHP mail. PHP mail is best. Tax calculation, yes, you can call your tax whatever. Here in Canada, we have 
a GST tax throughout all of Canada. Very nice one. Canada wide, it's 5%. Okay, include in the shipping, yeah. Oh no, we don't want to include the shipping. That's not a good idea. You want shipping separate. Additional tax rates, you can have additional tax rates in different areas like BC has a 12% tax. So you can go through, if you're in Canada, you can go through and add the different tax rates for all the provinces. Come on. Load, load, load. Okay, and you can keep going down like we can add all the provinces. Or it looks like you can also add all the U.S. tax rates, depending on what you need. Global shipping configuration, calculate the shipping. Yep, you can calculate it by weight or fixed price or price tiers based on order total, quantity units, la da da da. There's so many ways you can do your shipping. Good way thing to think about when you're dealing with it. Custom CSS, if you want to customize the CSS for your own store, you can do that here and they give you what the CSS is currently and you can go through and customize it. So we'll go back up and save all of that. I'm not save. Okay. Saving, saving, saving. My internet is slow tonight. Not the servers. Servers show that they're working well. So now what we got to do is we still got to deal with the invoice settings. So where that's at over here on the left hand side and it's underneath your payment options. You need to check which ones you're going to use. We're just going to have it set for PayPal and the credit card manual. We want the custom manual because if we use that for testing. Turn off all the others. The rest of them are all pointless for us. Okay. And one more time we save that because if we don't save it, we'll lose it when we go to the next page we're adding to. I can't even do the Jeopardy theme while we're waiting for this. <clears throat> Everybody knows the Jeopardy theme, right? Okay, so we've got that saved. So now we're going to go down here and we're going to do... We're going to do the... Do the... Purchase invoices, where that, there it is, purchase invoice settings right there. Okay, and we're going to enable invoices. You can add a product SKU on here if you want. And the company name, we're just going to call it Sandbox Page. We're going to run with the company name instead of a logo. If you choose a logo, ah, we'll go with the logo, what the hell, it says the company, that's good. The company phone number, the company fax, the company web address, the company shipping address, any footer comments on it, any footer comments. And then what it does is it, when, once you click save on this, just below it will give you an example of what your invoice is going to look like to your customer when they place an order. It will look like this with all the information and here's the footer comments. So you can put something down there like, you know, thank you very much, blah blah blah, you know, we appreciate your order, you're always a fantastic, we love our customers, all that good stuff. We love customers, customers are great. Okay, so, and we're waiting, waiting, waiting. Why is my internet so slow tonight? Okay, so we've done our configuration for this thing. Now we're going to put some products in here. 
you can import products you want if you are bringing them from say an OS Commerce database you can do it directly to the OS Commerce images get them directly from the OS Commerce database all that information there or if you have a CSV file you can upload the CSV file and prepend some URL images everything you need okay and then you can put a delimiter comma colon bar whatever your delimiter is now what we're going to do because we're not importing products because we don't have anything set up for that we're going to create some categories no categories so we're going to create a couple of categories because we're going to do a couple of different types of products here we're going to do one is digital products digital products category image and eh, what the heck let's go get an image and there we go that image will be fun and we'll call we'll just give it a description digital products keywords digital products parent category we don't have one because there's no other categories yet and we wait for it to load okay and we need one more product category and what this one's going to be because we've got nothing better to add to it we're just going to call it t-shirts that's the best one we've got for demonstrating exactly what we're going to do okay and keywords okay and see if you had it under multiple categories you could then put it in a subcategory like say you created t-shirts and then you created another category called gray t-shirts you'd put it underneath t-shirts and so on and so forth with that okay so we're gonna save that category okay so we've got that done now what we need to do is we need to go down here and we need to go in and create some product variations because we need that before we start adding products okay and first we add a new product and the first one here is going to be a digital product or no this is for t-shirts so we're gonna go small small t-shirt okay radio button save variation come on add a new one medium t-shirt we want that as a radio button too okay and we want one more okay and radio button on that one so as you can see you can also cause them to be check boxes or drop down And just on Don, Don on me, I think I might have changed. I might have put those in the wrong order, but we'll come back to that. Variation options. This is where you're going to create some options for the variations. And yeah, I put them in the wrong order because we create them here. So we're going to put some colors here. Small gray. Under small. At a price. Five bucks additional prices yep okay
small red put under small add price five bucks what this does is this adds it this adds an additional five bucks to whatever the price is now you can also have it had additional additional five bucks to it if you want so you can play around with that multiple levels of stuff so we're only going to go with that too right there okay so we've done that now you've got custom fields also now what the custom fields are for this is supposing you need additional information from your client who's ordering stuff from your site say you do specialized embroidering on a t-shirt you can go special embroidery and B R O I D E R no, embroiders okay okay and we're gonna put that as a caption and a type you can have it as a text input, a text area, a drop-down, checkbox list, a radio button. So you can do multiple things here. We're going to make it a text area. You can make it required, add an additional price to it, charge more for that item, require it, error message if they don't do it, um, global option, you can have it show up in the for the entire the entire order or just on specific products. So we'll just save the one, and we'll show you how that's used later. Okay, now you've also got discount coupons. And of course, discount coupons, everyone knows what a coupon is. And we'll call this one discount coupon. Okay, code save money. Okay, so if they type in that code there, they save money. Or you can have it generate a code for you, which it'll probably generate a random number. And just to see what kind of random number it gives you. It gives you a random number. They'd have to put that in there. That way, there's no duplicates to it. You can have it as a fixed type of discount, dollar value, or a percentage of the sale. Let's say 15, 15%. Expiry date. You can have it never expire or put an expiry date in there. And today is the 19th of April, so we're going to put the 25th of April. Okay, max use, you can limit the number of times they can use this coupon. You can have it unlimited or you can say this coupon can only be used five times. So so when you say for the first five visitors, you can really mean it. The first five people to use it get to use it. And sixth person doesn't get to use it. And they get to whine at you going, why doesn't it work? And say, well, you're number six. You should have been there sooner. So you can make it active or deactivate the coupon. We're going to activate it. We might remember how to use it later when we're placing an order. We'll give it a shot. Okay, next thing down the list here, orders. This is when you orders have been placed. You can go look that up. Order items. This one here. By user, product they ordered, quantity, anything like that. So we've got all that. So now what we need to do is we need to add a few digital files. So we're going to go add a couple of digital files first because we need those in here digital file. So the first digital file we're going to use here and I have to excuse me while I go look that digital file up because I've forgotten what it looked like or what digital file we were using. And digital file we're going to use is spread out over here. And the first digital file we're going to use is called Seven Deadly Sins. It's an ebook on marketing. Seven Deadly Sins of Marketing, I believe it is. Okay, and we're going to put that as a product. We don't have a product yet for it to link to. File upload. And you, if you've got a download link, you'd place the download link if you've already got the file uploaded. If not, we're going to upload the file now. And we're going to place it up there. Save the file. So you can place your digital files before or after you put your products in. And it'll take a moment to upload the file. And as we do that, we can say there's a lot to this plugin, as you can see, because now we are we're nearing the uh, 
35 minute mark of what we're doing with it right now and so there's still a quite a bit left to, left to be done and for some reason it couldn't save the file hmm. that is intriguing we're going to have to do a quick pause here while I double check that I'll be right back okay well we're back we're gonna try this again and if it doesn't save we'll try doing something different and we'll come back to it it's only a meg Only a meg in size, it's not that big a file. So, at any rate, we're uploading the file one more time. And we'll see what happens. Take a moment, let this thing think. Okay, it hit it again, can't be saved. So we're going to have to come back to this for some reason it's not saving. It might be because we don't have a product yet for it. So let's go. Oops. We're not importing products. We're going to go add products. Okay. First thing we've got to do is add a new product. And as you can see, it's a post for doing it all. And this one here is going to be Seven Deadly Sins. Seven Deadly Sins of Market. Okay. And because we're going to do that, we're just going to do that. And we're going to use some Lorem Ipsum here to fill it in and give it some bulk. So if you've never used Lorem Ipsum, it's great stuff. Okay. Product image. We need to go get the product image. It's right here. Okay. Okay, extra images. You can add additional images here if you've got additional images. If you don't, don't worry about it. Categories. Okay. Goes into digital products. Okay. Product sales active. Create post. If you create a page, it'll create a page under here. With DPAT, so you can change that even from the base settings that were set in the configuration. You can add additional description. And what that's for is this is for the additional tabs, which you will see later. Okay. And again, let's just add some lorem ipsum here. Because lorem ipsum is the easiest way to get paragraphs of text. Okay. Custom fields. We're not going to use a custom field on this one because this isn't being imported. Product pricing. Fixed price. We're going to price this out at three bucks. Retail suggested price, six bucks. Wholesale price, two bucks. Product flight, digital. Treat pricing, uh, <coughs> saying say it turned on this, it'll treat the item pricing as the same product disregarding different variation options. So if we were going to do different variations, we're not going to add variations to it, so we won't be using that here. We have no suppliers, but we can add a supplier here. And what we'll do is digital supplier. We'll add that supplier now. It's nice that you can just add it on the fly. Okay. Affiliate external product. Now this is where say you use selling affiliate products or external products. If you click yes, it gets you to get the referral URL, the target window, all that additional stuff. Say you use ClickBank and you're selling ClickBank products, you can put them into your store here. So it's actually kind of useful. Measurement, none because it's digital, but if it if you're shipping something, you would label it as units, bottles, boxes, bags, liters, blah blah blah. Button text, add the basket or you can change it. Minimum order, minimum order can be 1 or zero, but one is pretty important. Items in inventory, you can have unlimited or you can have, say, five. Keywords, product sample. And actually, we'll make that one the ebook one. We saw that there. Until I've done this before. Okay, and WordPress categories, you can stick it into the WordPress categories, store shopping. And then code, product code given by the supplier. Okay. okay, and that's all of that. And you go back up here, 
everything's done and you click save products okay now it's all there the digital product setup now before we go any further we're going to go add one more digital product and then we'll add a t-shirt and the other digital product is called internet marketing secrets fifty two internet marketing secrets fifty two internet marketing secrets and again dump some lorem ipsum in here Okay, and again we need a picture for it so we've got that here oops that's the wrong one that's not what we want for picture we want that's the picture okay and digital products again active post page add another description and again get some lorem ipsum okay Okay, additional description. Okay, fixed price. This one here we will go for four bucks. Suggested retail, seven bucks. Wholesale price, two bucks. Product type, digital. Treat pricing the same, we don't need. Supplier, digital supplier. Measurement, we don't need. External link, no. Keywords, ebook, minimum order, one. Total number of units six, and then store shopping. Okay, and then make sure everything is set there. Click save product. <clears throat> okay, so we've got two digital products. Now we're going to go add a T-shirt. One smart t-shirt. Okay, and again we need lorem ipsum. Yes, lorem ipsum is your friend when you're doing demos and layouts because everyone needs text and you need it in a hurry. Who wants to type it if it's just for testing? And we don't want it digital products, we want it in t-shirts. And because we don't know what picture to choose, we're going to go look and see what pictures we've got available in this folder. And we have something cool here. Here, there we go. That'll make an interesting photo for it. Okay, active. Add another description. And we're going to do that just because. Okay. Fixed price twenty-two dollars. What the heck? Retail suggested price thirty-three dollars. Wholesale price twelve bucks. Product type tangible. Unit weight one kilo. Unit width thirty-four. Notice it's all in in uh, metric here, <clears throat> I'm sure I missed the setting there for all of the, for all of you uh, people living in uh, the one country in the world that is still using the standard system. You know who I'm talking about. The rest of the world uses the metric system. Unit length again, 55 centimeters. Unit height, oh about three centimeters. Okay, exclude this from global shipping calculation. No. Additional shipping cost. Yes, add shipping cost. Fixed percentage. Let's add a percentage. Um, calculate on the products whole price and then the product shipping no shipping methods are available right now treat pricing same as product we're gonna go yes and we're going to get variation large small and gray and then we don't have any under medium so we'll leave that alone supplier we don't have one we're gonna call it cool t-shirt supplier cool t-shirt supplier. Add that supplier. Okay, we don't gonna add an external product, so we're not going to. And the 
shipping unit is units. Okay. Number in inventory, 33. Oops, no, minimum order is 33. Minimum order is 1. Shipping, 22. Keywords, t-shirts. T-shirts. And store shopping category. So you can see how you add all that stuff in there. Okay, so we're going to save the product. <clears throat> And it'll take a moment. And you can see we've now got three different products in here. So now we can double back again and check out one thing here, which is the digital files. We need to get some digital files uploaded. So now we're going to try to upload those digital files to match up. Seven Deadly Sins, we're going to put that. See, now it gives us the product drop downs to stick it with. Okay, we're going to upload the file. We're going to go get here, 7 Deadly Sins PDF, save the file. <clears throat> Let's hope now it saves properly because now we're assigning it. Come on. I'm going to save you guys the pain and I'll pause it for while this is uploading. Yay! For all of those who were sitting there waiting, for those that didn't see it pause and boom, we're back again. Hey, that took all of three or four minutes. I had to go do some adjustments to it to get it all uploaded. So anyway, as you can see, digital files are uploaded and assigned to their proper products now, which is actually pretty cool. So now we can move on with that. And we've got product content. Now, we we'll pop into product content here. And what this will allow us to do is make some adjustments to the products. That's the additional descriptions. Okay, and that's the additional descriptions that we added in there. All right, so you can come back in here at a later time, say, oh, I need under this 52 marketing secrets. So oh, I kind of screwed up the additional product description here. So let's pop in there and let's change that description. There it is right there. We don't have enough lorem ipsum. Let's add another paragraph of it. What the hell? Everyone likes lorem ipsum. More lorem ipsum, more lorem ipsum. There you go. And then you just save it. Now suppose you needed to reassign it. You could do that too. So you can see how it allows you to come back in and do that. <clears throat> it's a very, very useful. So the content's been saved. That's what we do with that. We've done our products. We've done digital files. Product images. This is for the images you've uploaded for your products. Well supposed to upload for your products. This allows you to add additional images to additional products. Let's say the t-shirt. What the hell? Another image. Just another image. Okay. And we're going to go find one. That one looks good. And we'll just save that image and assign it to the t-shirts. Because we'll see how that works when we get to the front page which we're heading there soon, I promise. Okay. No image available. Hmm. Didn't like that for some reason. We'll come back to that. Okay, suppliers. <clears throat> this is where you can modify your supplier list. Remember the ones we created on the go? You can go in and change them. You should be able to add additional information besides the supplier name. Create a login account for them. Okay. Um, create a logo for them. Um, order notification. Send the supplier an email when you've got the order details. That's actually pretty damn useful. Okay, and WordPress post or page. You can also delete that out. Okay, so we don't want to do that. Variation options we've dealt with. Custom fields. Again, we sort of dealt with the custom fields on the special embroiderer. We're not going to come back. Discount coupons. And the discount coupons, now that we have products, we can go apply this coupon to a product. We should be able to apply it to a product. Nope, not here. All right, where is it applied to a product? I remember it somewhere. Let's go pick a product. Let's put it here. Where is the 
discount coupon. Hmm. Start a product measurement. More. Hmm. All right, we'll have to find that. I thought it was right there. So, anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to pop back to the front page. Front page of your website. We're going to go look at the shop. And it should bring us up the products we have for sale. There's our products. This is what the um, grid view looks like. It puts them in little boxes along the way. Okay, and over here on this side, this menu here. And if you click on it, it takes us directly to the specific product. Okay, and it puts it here. Now what does tabs, remember those discussions I was having on tabs earlier? You get your description here, you get an additional description here when they click that tab. And you can add, if there's related products, another tab would appear here and it would have related products. So you can use that tabs to do numerous things. Click add the basket, it just, multi it just sticks it right into the basket while it spins here. Eventually it adds it to the basket whenever it decides that Ajax is actually working. And there we go. It just added it to the basket. Bingo bongo. And you'll see over here on the right hand side the shopping cart has now appeared. A very good thing. Oh, there's the discount coupon code right there for it. Okay, but we'll be going to that shortly. Okay, now the other thing is if you got a picture for it and you click on the picture, Boom, shows it right up for folks so they can get a big idea on what it is. Okay, now we're going to go check out some of the other products here. Come on. Load, load, load. Oh, we should have just went right here on the side. We want to check out the small t shirt with the fancy little image. Okay, now. The other thing we did with the small t-shirt was we added additional images, remember? We've got the one image here. You load it up, get a look at the image once it finally loads. Do, 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 do. We're just having a biosh of a time tonight with the uh, internet. Gotta hate when it's slow like this and there's no reason for it. All right, that one, it's not loading. <clears throat> Okay, so we've got the description, gives you all the description, what category it's in, additional description right here, and the gallery. So it shows us the additional images. Now, of course, you've got to properly size your images. I didn't do that. I just threw an image up there. Okay, now when you order it, you can small gray, small red, choose the bas basket here, small t-shirt. Now, where was the additional options? because we had the additional option. Oh yeah, small gray, small red, same price. Add the basket again. Just click, add the basket, and there it goes. Clicks it and adds it to the basket. We've got two items in our basket now. Okay, so we've done ordered all that. Now you people can either go here to view their shopping cart or complete their order. If they view their shopping cart, takes them to the main page to view their shopping cart. Shows what's in their shopping cart. Small t-shirt, small plus five dollars, 27 bucks total shipping. You can delete it out of their order if they found out they missed it. Adds the tax right here. Then they can go to checkout or add a discount coupon code. And it looks like discount coupon codes are applied globally. So you gotta make sure that since it's applied globally, you make sure they, you're willing to have it applied to every product in your store. Okay, and which one was we had? We had save money, did we? Save money. And we're going to apply the code. Now we should see a discount appear in that shopping cart when it reloads. There we go. Right here. Discount coupon. Minus 15%. Bing. And it's dropped down the price. Okay. <clears throat> so that's actually quite useful. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go check out, place an order takes us to the next step. Now of course you'd have to do a much better job of your forms than this one here because it's got the colors don't match up properly. Now they've got PayPal or manual payment. We're going to choose manual payment. We've got to fill the form. So we'll fill the form up with test data and then we hit continue. That's for the billing info. And then it's got order finished. Thank you for submitting your order. Your total amount for this order was blah, blah, blah. 
$29.51.2. Hmm. That's interesting how it splits it out like that. So, <clears throat> what we've got now is they have the order. If they paid like this, it's a manual payment. They have to wait for it to be approved. They can look at their order history, see what they ordered, go through their history, and they can see it in here. And they'll see their history here. Now, what you will see, of course, you'll get an email telling you somebody's placed an order. And we'll show you that here in just a So, resume. Okay, so you'll get an email. And what that email will look like will be something like this. Order receipt. This is the receipt they receive. You'll get something similar to this as the admin. It'll tell you what they've ordered. You need to go check your system. Okay. When you do, you log in. Click on the overview button for your checkout and it'll come up and tell you you've got orders. Okay, and completed orders are right here, so you'll have to go check out the orders. Okay, and it tells you order one by Johnny Tester, manual payment, completed, processed, paid, no. Ship, no. So what you have to do is you have to go in there, edit the order, bring it up, you can see who ordered it all everything you can also save it as a PDF file right here you can resend the invoice to people if they haven't paid their bill you can also make changes to it right here change the order completed played you can change it to paid if you've taken their money shipping price Oops. five bucks shipped now eh, we shipped it to them what the heck manual payment tax percentage total discount blah 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 and then you click save order so now it's been updated, saved, changed, paid and shipped. You only do that after you've paid after it's been paid and shipped. And it'll show you what products you're supposed to have paid and shipped for. And if you click on save PDF, it'll go create a PDF for you and you can open it right up. And once it opens up, you can bring it over and it shows you what it is, where it's being billed to, which will be their billing, shipping information. Okay, this is all your information over here. So, and that's the receipt they get. Okay. Now, if they'd have paid with, say, PayPal, for example, and they had gotten their thing and they logged into their account, okay, they would get logged in there and now they can download that product instantly and they get a new link here it says downloads management they can click on that and it takes them directly to where they can download that product and it shows it right here it's downloadable okay and they can click right there and get the file for download here it is and they can open it save it whatever they want to do that's the great way they can also do it from on the, over here on the right hand side now they can go back to their account. <clears throat> and if you use the proper shipping uh, modules in here, you can actually add tracking codes. And so they can actually sort of see what's happening with it. They can pop in here and see, do a view on it. They'll find out what's paid. There's a spot in the shipping modules um, that adds to this that allows for tracking codes. And that is pretty much this plugin and what it does for you. It's sometimes hard with this plugin to know exactly which way you got to deal with things. You sometimes will have to double back to uh, add or change something. For instance, we need to add more we need to add more um, let's call it uh, tabs. We want to add more tabs to one of the uh, products here. Okay, and come on, log in. Come on. Waiting for it to log in. Okay, so we're back again. Computers caught up with what our brains are trying to do. So we're back here to see, and we're going to show you some of the different changes you can do. This is the grid view, as you saw. Now we can go back into the configuration settings and change that grid view. 
and we can change that grid view. Come on. Come on. Uh, go server. Okay, so we've got it coming back now, and uh, for some reason, like I said, my internet blows tonight, and it's creating other grief. So, shopping cart. Add cart, continue shopping, checkout configuration, name of buy now, no, product page settings, da, 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 da. product page, keywords, categories, yes, description, above fields, add to basket buttons, below fields, add to basket button. Uh, display, let's put that above just because you can see how different it is. Display how many, show button text link, where's the grid view? Related products, ah, here we go. List view, related products and tab, yes. Fields and tab, yes. Option link, top, image link, thumbnails, universal text box. Your products, yeah. Show content tabs, okay. Show and field set, okay. Universal message, universal message, and here it is products list view. We're going to go list view here, and we're going to have it show custom fields, and we're going to leave it at that. So we've just changed a whole bunch of stuff. So we'll hit save configuration here. Just take a moment to uh, load up. That's it. Come on, you bugger. Okay, so hopefully it's saved. But what we're going to do here, just in case, is we're going to leave that like that so you can see. Now we'll open another front page on a new window. Okay, and so it should give us the list view, so you'll be able to see the difference in the layout. Okay, here's the list view for it. Oh, that's the first category, sorry. We want the shop. Okay, and it didn't save, so let's go back to this and get it to save all our new configuration settings. For some reason, uh, save you, bugger. There it is now. It's saving. All right, so that is now saved. So now we can go back to the page here. Hit the refresh button. Okay, now this is the list view. See how it lists them up? And the other way was grid view. Personally, I like the grid view better. Now, when we go pick a product, like a small t shirt, we go to the product itself. Now we've got an options tab here, so you can pick the options here instead of having the options how they were before up here. Description, description, additional photos, that's supposed to be a thumbnail. Okay, product options, click for options, brings them up here. So you can see it changes the layouts. So you can play with the way the layouts are and you can add additional information by changing options, adding custom fields, and more fun stuff to the whole bloody thing. Now let's go check on this one, this product here. Now this one here only has the descriptions, two descriptions, nothing else. Here's where the universal message went in. So you can have something here to draw attention to your product. And you notice the add the basket is right up here. And they can add it to their favorites too. Say they add it to their favorites menu. They click add to favorites. Okay. And what that's for is when they log into their account and they hit their account, there should be a new favorites section when they're logged into their account. Say it's something they buy all the time. And here it is. New favorites. View favorite products. When they go there, it'll list off their favorite products. So if they buy the same stuff over and over, they can come back to it on a regular basis. So that's some of the additional changes you can do. And there's so much more for tweaking and bouncing. Custom fields for adding even more information or requesting information from people. Say for instance, 
on your special embroidery which doesn't seem to be assigned right now because I didn't see that to anything we can require it please fill in special embroidery okay add price free and we can assign it to the t-shirt that's why we didn't see it, it wasn't assigned so now that we've assigned it and we required it now what can happen here is we can go look at the t-shirt okay and it should have asked us for a spot for special embroidery it shouldn't add it to the card it should come up with an error message well did we save that? yeah it saved it oh there it is it's under the options field it's right here special embroidery Silly bugger. Okay. So they have to put it under options, special embroidery. Special embroidery. They have to choose a size, and it can be added to the basket. When the Ajax is working correctly. Which at this particular moment in time it's not. So that's the additional items to this. So that's pretty much everything we've got for this and how you can change it and stick it into these tabs. Now you can pull it out of these tabs by changing the settings in the configuration menu. I like the tabs myself, it makes it nice. The important thing to do is you choose a good theme that works better with the layout here or you would start customizing the different types of uh, content in here. So that's the end of this screencast, and I hope it helps. It uh, helps you lay out this, this product. This is a very good shopping cart. It's pretty robust for what it is. It uh, will do probably about you know 80 to 90 percent of all the things you need done. The only thing that I see missing in this right now is reports. There doesn't seem to be any reports whatsoever, really with this product it's, you know in the overview it tells you what the what the sales were but it doesn't tell you much else it doesn't tell you how many it doesn't tell you when it will tell you your total income right up in here it tells you your total income here but that doesn't help you at all when you're trying to figure out how much tax you gotta pay the government and other things so that information's gotta be here somewhere I just haven't managed to find it Oh, you can filter it here. Filter it by payment methods, filter it by completed and processed, and filter it by customer names. So there's really, again, not much else you can do with it. I'm pretty certain there's something here so you can pull out your tax information, but I'm not certain where it's at yet. Not something I've had to deal with yet, and I'm sure you can find it in the support and help. So anyway, that would be the end of our screencast. I hope it's been helpful to you. So enjoy, and until the next screencast, have yourself a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be out there on the globe today. Thank you very much.